Hello and welcome to the quick start guide for the Radiation Alert Observer USB software brought to you by SE International. To get started, first you'll have to download the software from their website. Uh, you can get that for free at seintl.com forward slash software. It'll take you to their software page and you just click on the link titled USB software and begin downloading it. Uh, once the file is finished downloading, you just click on the installer and get started installing the Observer USB software onto your computer. And once the install is finished, you'll be prompted to launch the software. Just say yes and hit finish. And you'll notice a little balloon pop up in your system tray letting you know that the USB is running. Uh, once you have that installed, you turn on your unit, wait for it to finish the power cycle, and then plug in the USB into the side. Uh, the USB window will launch here and you'll start to collect readings right away. The software offers a few different functions. You can download the data off of your unit, you can change the settings on your unit, you can just collect the live data that it's recording, uh, you can zero out your recordings, over here you have The software window is basically broken into th three different sections. The software window is broken up into three different sections. Right here you have your grid. This is going to record periodically and create a, a spreadsheet for you. Up here you have your chart. Now this is collecting the live data that's coming off of your device. And in the lower right you have a window that will mirror the display. You can also um, turn off the echo of the display and change the settings to read in whatever units of measurement you choose. A couple different ones available. You can also change the averaging time. The averaging time located right here is set at a default of 30 seconds. That mirrors the averaging time set as a default into the radiation detectors that you're using with the software. You can change the, the averaging time by scrolling down or up depending on where you want it to be, it goes up to a minute. That means that the readings that you're seeing are based on an average of the previous 60 seconds worth of collected data. Now by default on the unit, if you have auto averaging turned on, which is turned on by default, the readings that you're seeing on the display of your unit are based on an average of the previous 30 seconds worth of collected data. Now you click this echo inspector display and that's going to echo the display of your unit. Say right now I have the unit in CPM. If I change the unit of measurement on the mode switch to MR per hour, that's reflected in the observer software window as well. Now we've been collecting data for a little bit, I can show you the scroll feature. Up here you have a window that by default is set to two minutes. So we are Right now we're seeing the most recent two minutes collected off of your device. This is a live reading that it's collecting while it's plugged in. If we want to see more of that, we can change the scroll window to say 10 minutes. Now we're seeing a 10 minute window in our time. Now we haven't had the unit plugged in for 10 minutes, so this is where we plugged it in and this is where it started collecting data. So. If we don't want it to scroll at all, the window will size depending on how long the count is. So right here we've been plugged in from a little before 9.30 to a little bit after 9.34. It time and dates to everything for you, puts a little stamp on there so that when you go to save it, you can save the chart or the grid and it saves in a, in a comma delimited text file that you can open up in any spreadsheet software. Now you can change the views so that you see just the chart or just the meter. Personally, I like to see them all at the same time. You can also change the preferences. In the chart settings, you can have the chart auto save and clear the data every pre-programmed time frame. I'll put, make it a 120 minute, you can make it every 60 minutes. This makes it so that your, your, your chart starts over depending on whatever specified time you put into that field there. Over here in the grid settings, 
right now we have it writing to the grid every half a minute and then you can also have it auto save every hundred data points every 200 data points whatever you whatever you prefer uh, we also have the additional grid data over here you can pick two units of measurement to be writing to the grid it's your choice and then there's also the use audible alarm if we have an alarm setting down here and then enable alarm at say 100 microseconds let's make it one and we'll set off the alarm we also have the cal panel in the calibration panel of the observer usb software you can change a couple of the features here you want to be sure to leave the dead time and the sensitivity alone unless you really know what you're doing because that could mess up the calibration of your unit especially if you have an NIST calibration. If you reset the defaults via the utility menu on the unit itself, it'll retain the calibration. Now right here we're looking at the efficiencies that are pre-programmed into the unit. Just because they're labeled with a specific isotope, you can actually change those efficiencies just as long as you remember which isotope you used as a marker for that. So if you're trying to calculate the efficiency of an isotope that's not pre-programmed into the inspector, you can change one of these isotope efficiencies and program in the efficiency of the isotope you're trying to calculate the activity of. Then when you go back to your unit and select that efficiency, just remember which isotope you used as a marker so that when you select that isotope, it's using the isotope efficiency that you programmed in. Up here we have uh, the units of measurement. You can actually switch them here or you can switch them via the utility menu. Over here we have a couple of different settings, some of which you can change in the utility menu, uh, like the unit of measurements here. Uh, you can set your alarm. Uh, you can also turn on data logging. You can turn on your backlight, but you can't set the time. So this side of the panel here lets you change a few of the features. Uh, you can change your units of measurements. Uh, you can set your, your alarm here. This is a way to turn on the data logging that's a little bit easier than the utility menu on the unit itself. And you can also set the data logging interval. Right now it's set at a default of 10 minutes. You can also set the amount of time that your backlight is on. You can clear your memory and you can set the contrast of your display and turn auto averaging on and off. Uh, once you've made those settings that you want to change, you hit update settings and they'll update the, your unit and you'll hear the unit beep. Under the functions menu, you can retrieve memory from the unit, and you can also set the time and date on the unit. Uh, let's just hit synchronize to my time and date on my computer. You'll hear the instrument beep twice, and you know that the time and date have been updated. After you do that, you can start retrieving memory off of there. Uh, it could take up to 30 seconds. Then it starts downloading the data. Once the data is downloaded, it'll pop up and show you your collected readings there, and then you can save it wherever you like. And that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, feel free to go to seintl.com forward slash support, or look for more videos here on our YouTube channel. Have a great day.